everyone, I hope you're all well and staying safe. This isn't quite how I imagined my first talk at St Martin's going, I'll be honest, but we're going to roll with it and I really can't wait to be worshipping with you again in person, hopefully in the near future. But until that point, I think it's really important that we think about how we can worship as individuals and family units, especially in a time when we can't go into the building of church. So we're going to start with a question. How would you define worship? So the official Blockbuster Dictionary, which I nicked off my dad, says that it's reverence paid to God or gods, especially in church service, which seems fairly clinical and doesn't really tell us how to worship, which is fair enough given the purpose of a standard secular dictionary. The Life with God Bible is a bit more helpful, defining worship as expressing in words, music, rituals and silent adoration the greatness, beauty and goodness of God by means of which we enter the supernatural reality of Shekinah or glory of God. Even with this and looking through theological dictionaries and a fair amount of googling, it's hard to find a comprehensive step-by-step -step way to worship with different options for different situations or contexts. Worship is very fluid and it's an ever-changing thing so no definition could really ever sum it up. It is very easy to fall into the trap of thinking that worship is done through music at church with a, the congregation to the songs that we like and we'll put up the, with the other song. This can feel like an incredible way to worship and for me it is often the way that I feel closest to God but this is only a fraction of our potential worship and this was before we were in a pandemic where we couldn't share per physical space or time with each other. So what do we do now? We worship. We worship our God in any and every way we can. We worship as we consciously serve God and make the kingdom of God more prevalent here on earth. We worship as God's disciples living in a broken world in awe of the majesty and glory of God. That's all we can do. We can worship and glorify God through so many ways, through music, dance, crafts, talking, praying, sharing God's love and using our God-given gifts. Ultimately, anything that finds and builds on the kingdom of God, anything that praises God is worship. Anything that is done to show God love, adoration, appreciation, wonder, glory, anything that builds on our relationship with God is worship. Whether it's talking to people who need company, praying, serving your family food, doing a neighbour's shopping, supporting someone who needs it, explaining the gospel, singing in your home. This is all worship and it's all worship we can do in a pandemic. When we live through the blessings we've been given and see God in those, when we use our God-given gifts, when we live our lives through the overflowing love of God, we are worshipping and we're also being disciples. It is, however, important to recognise that sometimes we feel like we can't worship. How can we worship an incredible almighty good God when everything's falling apart. This is something that I've really struggled with at times over the past couple of years when things get difficult and anxiousness rises. I often feel like I can't talk to God or worship in the ways that I know best. I know that God loves me, is supporting me and guiding me, but I can't make enough brain space to be in awe and wonder I'm too focused on this human life and the things that I'm facing. And I think that that's okay in moderation. God understands our suffering and our pain through Jesus. Arguably, the largest section of pure worship in the Bible is Psalms. 150 songs, poems and readings, talking of God's goodness, reaching to God and calling out in pain. About 70% of these psalms are actually forms of lament, feelings of anger, hurt and fear, but they still worship. 
Psalm 13 is a good example of this, and I'm just going to read it for us now. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I bear pain in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all day long? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Consider and answer me, O Lord my God. Give light to my eyes, or I will sleep the sleep of death. And my enemy will say, I have prevailed. My foes will rejoice because I am shaken. But I trusted in your steadfast love. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. Isn't that a good psalm? And it's something that I think all of us can relate to at some point or other in our lives. And that's one of the wonderful things about the psalms and about the entire Bible. So in Psalm 13, the writer is feeling abandoned by God in his struggles. He is losing against his enemies and can't see God's face at this time. And yet, when we get to verses 5 and 6, the writer shows a knowledge of God and the blessings he's been given and see something beautiful. There are psalms filled with anger, confusion or frustration, but which still proclaim the glory of God. Pretty much every human emotion is written in that book and every emotion is brought to worship. God knows this world isn't perfect and that neither are we. Jesus knows our pain and suffering and faces it alongside us. There's no point trying to hide our true feelings and frustrations from God. God's there with us and yearning for our pain to stop like any parent would for their child. Isn't it incredible that we have a God who serves us just as we serve, who is there for us, who gave us gifts, who sacrificed himself so that we could share a relationship with him. God wants to hear you reach out in whatever emotion you'll have. And that itself, I think, is reason enough to worship. So, I have three challenges for you. One is to look at your day-to-day -day life in lockdown. How are you connecting with God? Where are you finding time to marvel at our Lord? The second, which can be connected, is to start to think and pray about how worship can be a part of your discipleship, or vice versa, how discipleship can be a part of your worship. And the third is at some point over the next few days, look through the psalm for a psalm that really captures how you're feeling at that moment and use it as worship. Sing it, say it, pray it anything you think of and I'd love some more ideas but use that as worship and use your worship in your discipleship and help your life become a life of worship to God. We are creatures of worship and we can worship as a larger church family singing together on a Sunday which I can't wait to do again and we can do this in our day-to-day -day lives and time with God. Neither is more important than the other. It's important to have a balance, feeding on worship and sharing your worship, so that through difficult times, your heart never stops worshiping the almighty God. Amen. And after that, I think we should worship together as that's what we would be doing if we were on our away day today. And so I've chosen a couple of songs that kind of fit with what I've been talking about and just a true worship song to kind of full, full, fuel you up and send you out as disciples. Some you'll know, one you might not, but I hope you can worship along with me and know that wherever you are, however far you may be from feeling normal churchgoer, that you can worship and we can praise our Lord together. So let's get started. <laughs>
song that is probably new to most of you it's one that I really love that really encapsulates how we can worship in a lament and how God still wants to hear that and how we can still praise God even when we're in the darkest times and this is a song that has meant a lot for me in the past and I hope that you can find something in it that sticks with you and I think you'll pick it up pretty quickly it's not too complicated, it's nothing too fancy, but it's something important to remember. So, off we go. to know that you care for me. 
You're good and you're kind and you care for this house. Lord, I believe you weep with me. Thank you everyone. I hope that you've enjoyed this and something will stick with you as you go forwards. Um, enjoy the rest of the day and I look forward to doing the quiz with you later. I think, you know, it could get quite competitive. But for now, let's say the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.